I'm all pro cornerback Richard Sherman, and when I'm not chasing receivers, I'm trying to keep up with my kids. That's why Alberto beef jerky is my favorite snack. Alberto is delicious, lean beef, slow cooked and seasoned to perfection, all natural and all delicious. Alberto beef jerky is protein packed, so I can keep up with my busy. Raiden, stop grabbing your sister's hair. Alberto beef jerky, you get out what you put in. Refers to Alberto's all natural line of beef jerky, minimally processed, no artificial ingredients. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show. Gordon Damer filling in for Stephen A. Another day. The number you know, 1-800-919-ESPN. 1-800-919-3776. My Twitter handle, at Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N-D-A-M-E-R. You know, I think it was about a month ago that I was speaking with... Might have been Buster only where we were talking about how active the baseball trade deadline would be Uh, and at the time he thought yeah it's going to be a very active couple of weeks before the trade deadline and then uh, you know some things have changed since then the Royals have gotten really hot Yankees have cooled off some but you've already gotten a big trade today in case you didn't hear Jose Quintana uh, on his way from the White Sox to the Cubs five-player trade Cubs giving up a couple of more prospects but with how the Cubs have played this year uh, certainly they got to make some moves to get jump-started here as we get ready for the second half. Um, It really hasn't been the Cubs' problem. They're pitching as much as it's been their offense, but uh, they do make the move today so you can cross the name Jose Quintana off uh, the Yankees' wish list, Uh, a guy who was uh, controlled for the next couple of years, made them appealing to the Yanks, but uh, Quintana not going to be a a Yankee uh, anytime soon. Uh, But much like uh, Seinfeld had the summer of George, what we have to begin again today is with the summer of the New York Knicks. Uh, We talked about it yesterday, the discussions uh, between the Rockets and the Knicks about Carmelo Anthony. Daily News reporting yesterday that talks were at the two-yard line. Uh, Other uh, reports make it out that there's still a lot of work to be done. Now, look, I have not talked to anybody. That has been my preparation. Uh, I have talked to no one. But generally how these kind of things go, and you know it if you've followed sports for any period of time, Report comes out, this trade is close. Then a day or so later, within 24 hours, this trade is almost done. Then 24 hours later, the trade is completely dead. Nothing can be done with this trade. It's dead, dead, dead. And then two weeks later, boop, all of a sudden the trade is made. Um, Based on the comments of more than anyone... CP3, Chris Paul, saying that just wait and see. I am fully confident that before too long, Carmelo Anthony will be a member of the Houston Rockets. But it's amazing. The Knicks who have spent the last decade figuratively as a punchline last night at the ESPYs, they were actually the punchline. Peyton Manning taking aim at the woes of the New York Knicks. These are all New York Knicks jokes. And these SB folks, they begged me to do these. And I got to tell you, they absolutely make me sick. Check this out. <laughs> Chris Stapps Porzingis couldn't believe how dysfunctional it is at Madison Square Garden. And that dude grew up in Latvia. <laughs> What a terrible year for the Knicks. They had to escort a former legend out of the building for acting like a crazy person. Then there was that whole thing with Charles Oakley. (laughs) (laughs) Phil Jackson's Knicks are the most embarrassing thing to happen in New York sports. And that includes the time Mark Sanchez ran full steam up his teammate's anus and fumbled a football. You know, do you think that years from now, do you, let's start with this. Do you think there's a day that has gone on since the, the butt fumble that Mark Sanchez has not heard about the butt fumble? That was what, five, six years ago now? Do you think there's been a full day, a 24 hour period where someone on the street has not come up to him and at least shouted, Hey, butt fumble. Yeah. When the, he had the flu and he was stuck at his house all day. You don't think somebody delivering food, somebody somewhere behind a bush, somebody, I don't think there's been a 20. Also, the other question I asked myself, remember how Mookie Wilson 
and um, Bill Buckner eventually came to deal with the Steiner Sports, and they did, like, autograph shows together. Do you think that it will ever happen that Mark Sanchez – what's the the offensive lineman's name is escaping me now? It, it was Brandon Mark, Moore. Brandon Moore. I, was, I kept saying Brandon Marshall in my head. I knew it wasn't right. Brandon Moore. Do you think they'll ever team up on, like, a Steiner thing where they both sign autographs of the picture? Uh, but getting back to the Knicks, it's tough to get too hard now on what the trade might be. Because we don't know what the trade's going to be. But just judging on what we've seen already, the circumstantial evidence, that the Knicks will, I'm almost positive, come out on the short. The longer this plays out, I think the better it is for the Knicks. Let's put it that way. But the things you hear, even the little things, and we don't know what the other team, there was a report yesterday the Pelicans might be involved. Um... But one of the big things you've heard so far is, well, the Knicks, uh, the Rockets don't have the picks necessary uh, to make the deal. But then I'm reading today that the Rockets still have their 2020 pick. Now, I realize you can't trade picks in back-to-back years. So uh, if they traded their 2018 pick, I'm assuming they have their 2019 pick. So 2020, they would be able to trade. And if you're the Knicks, that's the pick you would rather w- Look, the Rockets, well, I don't think, um, I don't look at them as a real title contender. I think they're a real weird uh, kind of slap-together team, and I'll need to see how that plays out with the additions they've made. I mean, you had Harden last year playing at an, uh, an almost MVP-type level. I mean, he was at an MVP level. He didn't win the MVP, but and it was primarily because he was the primary decision-maker, and now you bring in Chris Paul, now you're going to bring in Melo, uh, it's just a very weird mix of guys uh, in the Western Conference that I got to see it before I'm ready to say, well, that's a 65 or 63 win team. You know, what did they win last year? 55 games? Okay. But I got to see how that plays out. It's a very strange team. But the other things you hear about the Knicks that are so troubling, like now there's reports that they're looking to trade for a point guard. And that Eric Bledsoe is a guy's name who has come up because of his relationship with uh, Jeff Hornacek from when they were both with the Phoenix Suns. And people are saying, well, that would make the Knicks better, and it would. But that should the, the point right now shouldn't be about being better this year. Again, it would be a disaster for the Knicks to make the playoffs next year in the Eastern Conference. We have seen, the, I, I know not recently, but I would think that Knicks fans would not be content with simply making the playoffs. I realize that you're desperate. You're in the desert. You've been in the desert forever, and you're just looking for a scrap of food. But the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference should not be the goal of this organization right now. The goal should be actually putting together a plan where this is going to be sustainable down the road, building the organization in the right way. And uh, there's been nothing that I've seen so far this offseason that makes me say, well, now the, the, the Knicks have finally gotten it. The Knicks have finally realized the error of their ways, and they're going to be upward and onward from here on out. And the report that, that they might be willing to trade for Eric Bledsoe, because keep in mind, what do the Knicks have to trade? Well, not a lot, but they do have some picks. That's really the only thing that they would be able to 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 move for Eric Bledsoe uh, outside of maybe what Courtney Lee is there a big market for Courtney Lee? So while we don't really have any more developments on the Mellow trade, it's it's uh, it's more of the same from yesterday, and it's more of the same from the Knicks from the last what ten years, and that's what worries me. One eight hundred nine one nine ESPN one eight hundred nine one nine three seven seven six. All right, let's start off on the phones. Uh, we will go out to uh, Cole in Brooklyn here. Yeah, Cole, you will start it off on uh, the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN New York. Hey, man, how we doing? Hey, Cole, what's going on? Uh, let's see. I'm I'm glad to hear uh, you doing this show for uh, Stephen A. Thanks, man. I'm I'm happy to be doing it. Well, great. Uh, I wanted to talk to Knicks fans and just tell you all to to calm down a little bit. We're not uh, actually. I'm going to go with what you were just saying. What you want right now? Uh, I think Phil Jackson probably would have been better off if he had said when he came in the first time, like, look, we're going to be terrible, but I have a plan. And I know he didn't, 
and I know that that wasn't the plan. But if they came out before the 17-win season and the 30-win season and whatever they got, 32-win season, uh, and just said, like, look, we're going to be terrible, but be patient. And it wasn't until he was about to draft Frank Nilakina that he decided to say, like, look, guys, be patient. And we, I think we all could have used that message maybe three years ago. And here we are. And I have Knicks fans who are like, oh, next year we're going to make it to the playoffs and we're going to make a run. And it's like, who are you watching that you think – that these Knicks are going to make it anywhere besides the lottery. Yeah, well, I mean, look, let's hope. Let, uh, Cole, let's hope that they're in the lottery. God, for I am worried beyond worried for Knicks fans' sake that they'll pull something out of their hat and in a terrible Eastern Conference somehow sw- sneak their way. Because, look, they, I, I, you never want to say with this with the Knicks, but they couldn't be more dysfunctional than last year, could they? I guess I probably shouldn't say that, but you wouldn't think so. I mean, at one point there were 14 and 10, and then Phil starts talking about the triangle nonsense, and then it's right off the cliff. But again, it's amazing to me, year in and year out, regime in, regime out. Like that was, That's always the problem with the Knicks is they're never willing to say, look, we're going to do this the right way. And nothing bothers me more than when people come to New York and tell me, well, you can't rebuild in New York. No, you can I, I'm in. Isn't that it's so insulting to people that aren't from New York? They come to New. York, no, you can't rebuild in New York, dude. You just got here. I've been here the whole time. You can rebuild if you have an actual plan. Now we don't want you just throwing stuff at the wall. Say, hey, this is rebuilding. No, you can rebuild in New York if you actually have a plan or a clue or something along those lines. Nothing we have seen so far this offseason shows you that the Knicks have figured out the ills and the problems that they actually have. Because, again, everything's backwards. Draft players, then fire the GM. Sign free agents, eh, we'll get to fire hiring a new GM down the road sometime. Once we're all capped out, then we'll go get a G- It just never ends. It never ends. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show. I've always said that Nick fans, most delusional fans, at least in New York sports, I haven't done the research, uh, but probably in North American sports, there's no greater group of fans that are more delusional based on previous uh, success and failure than Nick fans. But I'm quickly finding that Conor McGregor fans are almost as delusional. They might be more delusional. Because, like, when you say, if you're a Knicks fan, you say, well, you know what, I think we're going to make the playoffs. I think that's delusional. But the Knicks have made the playoffs before. I mean, they do play basketball in the NBA where playoff spots are available. The more McGregor fans you talk to, it doesn't matter what facts you bring to the table. So I teased the last segment. We'll get back to the phones in a second at 1-800-919-ESPN, 1-800-919-3776. Gordon Damer filling in for Stephen A. I teased the last segment by saying that if you're a Conor McGregor fan, right, and you think McGregor is going to win, that what you're really saying is, is one thing. And that one thing is, is that you believe that Mayweather McGregor will be the greatest sports up, uh, upset of all time. That's what you're saying. Make no mistake. What you are saying is that this will be the greatest upset of all time in the history of sports. And it's simple for, for two reasons. One, mostly. The one that is a little bit less. Well, it's boxing. It's one-on-one. It's not a team sport. It's not where somebody could have a bet. It's one-on-one. There's less variables involved. The second thing is, is that, like, take whatever sports, whatever upset in the history of sports that you believe is the greatest, whatever it is, the 80 hockey team, the Red Sox coming back from 03 down, whatever, the Jets in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl three, what, all those teams played those sports. So while they were upsets, Those teams had played those sports before. Like, it wasn't the type of thing where um, the U.S. hockey team, the men's U.S. hockey team, was a field hockey team. And then they said, you know what? 
Let's get rid of this grass. Let's do this on ice. We got this stuff on the grass down. Let's go throw it on the ice and see what we can do. I think we can make it happen. The Red Sox weren't a softball team that said, you know what? These balls are too big. Let's go. And they threw them underhand. Let's go throw. Let's go jerk it over to the, the baseball field. And let's see what we can do over there. And it's amazing to me, the press conference yesterday was more entertaining. I'll give them that. The, the material was better. Conor McGregor is clearly, uh, in terms of uh, holding and winning the press conference, he clearly wins the press conference. He's wittier. He's more off the cuff. He's more natural. Uh, he's not as angry as uh, you know, all of uh, Floyd's attacks come from a place of anger. Um, whereas McGregor's trying to, you know, be a little bit more, I don't know, humorous. But it's amazing to me, if you look at the betting that's being done, more and more people are betting on McGregor. Now, look, that's based on the odds. You're not, if you bet on, on Mayweather, you're not going to make any money on the bet. I get that. But when you're betting on McGregor, you're saying this will be the greatest sports upset of all time. The guy, you can do whatever you want. You can come up with anything. Well, you know, in MMA, he's going these five-minute rounds. That's fine. He's not a boxer. Well, you know, he's got boxing training. Yes, but he's not a boxer. He does not box for a living. Floyd Mayweather, on the other hand, is a boxer. That's what he does. So, look, I am no one to tell you where to put your money. I'm buying a – I bought a $30 shirt because it had Randy Macho Man Savage on the front. I'm no one to judge anybody. But if you're if you're putting your money down on Conor McGregor to win the fight, just know you're saying, I'm saying this will be the greatest upset in the history of sports. Ooh, yeah! Yeah, snap into a Slim Jim. That's how good Randy Macho Man Savage was. He could actually get me to eat a Slim Jim. Processed meats that's been sitting on the shelf for God knows how long. Um, all right, let's go back to the phones. 1-800-919-ESPN, 1-800-919-3776. So somehow I have morphed uh, Nick's talk into Conor McGregor talk and Floyd Mayweather. So we'll, we'll continue on both of them. Uh, let's go back to the phones here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Big C. Big C on Long Island is next up on ESPN New York. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Now, I'm a boxing purist, and I just wanted to touch on the on the McGregor. Sure. Uh, and I actually wanted to defend him. In some right, as far as speaking about Conor McGregor. Now, do I think he's going to win the fight? Do I think he has a chance? No, I don't. <laughs> All right, we're in agreement. <laughs> but here's here's the thing that I don't understand people are saying, is that McGregor, he doesn't have the legs. He's not going to be able to last. He doesn't have the length or the legs? He doesn't have the legs. As the legs, as the stamina. Okay. Stamina. Okay. And what I don't understand is that this guy – have to deal with, let's just say, hypothetically speaking in training, a guy sitting on his chest, not allowing him to breathe, trying to choke him out for two rounds, for ten minutes, and then come back the next round, deal with leg kicks, my legs are weak, deal with this, deal with that. He's only dealing with 5% of what he normally deals with in a championship match of 25 minutes. So for people to sit here and say that McGregor isn't going to be able to hold out as far as stamina is concerned, I think is a big, big mis- you know, big, big misunderstanding. Well, look, Big C, I will say this: if, if if this fight were any other kind of fight, I would take Conor McGregor. Unfortunately for Conor McGregor, it's not any other kind of fight than the one that is the specialty of Floyd Mayweather. Like in terms of like negotiating a way to decide. Who's the baddest man between these two? Uh, Floyd Mayweather got everything he wanted. It's a boxing match. Uh, so if that's the case, obviously it's going to favor Floyd Mayweather. And I'm not saying that if it, if it were any other kind of uh, brawl, street fight, UFC in the octagon here, there, on the moon, it would probably favor Conor McGregor. But unfortunately, it's the one that... Um, that Mayweather is the best at, has been at the best at, and Floyd's fights are always the same. And I don't doubt that this one will be boring as well because I'm not a diehard boxing fan. 
I like boxing because it's guys getting punched in the face, and I'm not one of the people getting punched in the face. Uh, that's why I like my, I'm a casual boxing fan. Give me Triple G. Give me, you know, give me somebody who's going to knock somebody out. I love it. Floyd Mayweather, to me, as someone who does not appreciate the defensive specialties that Floyd is able to do, uh, it's not that interesting to me. But he has that ability. So why would I think that someone who's never boxed before pre- professionally will be able to do something that professional boxers and, – and I'm, again, I want to say one other thing. I'm generally the, the zig when everybody else zags guy. If I could see a way where this was going – I mean, the only way you, I can see this, if, if, if somehow Conor McGregor does beat Floyd Mayweather, the first thing everyone will say is this was a fix. It'll be the first thing on everybody's mind because, at the end of the day, it's boxing. 1-800-919-ESPN, 1-800-919-3776. Uh, Wayne in Brooklyn. Wayne, you're next up on ESPN New York. What's going on, Gordon? How you doing, man? I'm good, Wayne. How are you? I'm doing okay. Got two points for you. First of all, regards to this McGregor Mayweather fight, I'm just going to say it's short and sweet. I'd rather watch reruns of the Chappelle show than watch this mess. There is a sucker born every minute, and I ain't one of them, Gordon. Yeah. No, I'm not dealing with it. The only fight that I want to see is Mayweather against Triple G. I'll pay a hundred dollars. I'll pay a hundred and fifty dollars for that fight. Yeah, no well, you, you you will have to dream that fight because there's no way Floyd is getting anywhere near that guy. Uh, and look, if you. Uh, I, I'm never, I'll never tell you what to do with your money. There is a part of me that is interested in seeing wh- how it will go down, and I'm not saying I won't buy the fight. I don't know. I- I'll have to see. I do feel like when push comes to shove, I'll probably plop the $100 down because I'm a sucker. And in this day and age that we live, you want to be part of the conversation that's going on uh, between Facebook and Twitter. You, you don't want to miss out on that. But do I think there's any chance or any realistic chance that Conor McGregor can win? No, I don't. Then you can come up with all the different ways. Oh, well, in UFC, right, they're not doing UFC. Newsflash, they're doing boxing. And that's what Floyd's really, really good at. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show. Uh, Did you see what LeVar Ball did last night? Uh, I saw that uh, he put up, what was it, 36 and 10? Lonzo Ball, what did I say? LeVar. LeVar, he could have put up 40 if he, if he would have been given the chance. No, Lonzo Ball, obviously. Uh, I think it was 36 and 10. And I saw that someone tweeted out, uh, might have been the big lead guy, I'm not sure, uh, that that was the first 30-point 10 assist game in the history of the Summer League. And the first thing that came to my mind was, oh, my God, somebody's compiling Summer League stats? Why, why would you do that? Why? W- w- what were you planning on doing with those? Like, this is the first year that I ever remember any real, it, like, outside of diehard, diehard fans of the NBA caring about the Summer League. But apparently someone, some schlub somewhere has been compiling these stats and is, wait a second, this is the first, that's amazing to me. Not the 36 and 10, the compiling of the stats uh what we've been talking about uh, today as i fill in for Stephen a uh has been the mayweather mcgregor fight coming up uh another one they have another press conference today like they keep flying different places and doing these press they realize how video works right like they could just stay in the same place and i realize they're probably getting some frequent flyer miles out of this i don't know uh, hey you, you gotta give them credit there was two preseason games and now we're going to uh, uh... Brooklyn and London. Right. And, and and yesterday's, I will at least give them credit. The first one was terrible. Um, it was not really all that entertaining. They definitely stepped up their game, but it did kind of come off as more scripted. But at least it was more entertaining. Like, it, it, it's, it's a negative that it seems scripted, but it was at least, um, I guess, something to watch. But uh, I have said that uh, what, the people who are big believers in Conor McGregor – if you're a big believer in Conor McGregor, if you're someone who is betting on Conor McGregor to win, uh, and you really believe it in your heart, you're not just doing it because the odds are in your favor, um, or at least you know in terms of what the payout would be, what you're saying is this this will be the greatest upset in the history of sports. 
because no, no, none of the other ones that would be what you come to mind, all those teams, all those players, they all played those sports. That was their job. That's not the case here. Now, how, no matter how you want to compare USC and Bob, they're different. They're not the same thing. So let's get back to the phones. one 800 919 espn one 800 919 Matt in Middletown, you are next up on ESPN New York. Hey, Gordon. Uh, yeah, I, I want to talk about McGregor, and if there's time, I want to ask you a question about the Yankees. Go ahead. Hit. Uh, all right, so um, I wouldn't bet money on McGregor, but just I have this gut feeling that he's going to knock him out. I mean, when he fought Jose Aldo, he got in Jose Aldo's head so bad. Now, this guy was one of the best MMA fighters at the time, and he got in his head so bad that he just went right at him and lunged at him, and McGregor caught him with a left. I think as these press conferences go on, McGregor knows what he's doing. He's going to try to get in Floyd's head and make him make a mistake and get too aggressive, and, and he's really good at countering. Well, I mean, look, the, the, the Mayweather playbook, and as I said, I'm a casual boxing fan, but I think even the casual boxing fan would tell you Mayweather has the same script each time, right? Gets into the fight, first couple of rounds, he's, he's kind of feeling things out. And then by the third round, generally, he has figured out his opponent and his opponent doesn't do damage for the rest of the fight. And Floyd just does what he does and wins. Doesn't knock him out, but he wins on points every single time. Um, if he's able to do that against the boxers he's already fought, I, I don't understand how you can think, like, McGregor's going to be able to get in his head and that when the fight comes, he's going to... This is all a plan for... Like, I understand that you see Floyd and he's he's shouting and he's screaming, but he, that dude's a smart guy. He knows what he's doing. And I think Connor knows what he's doing as well. He's going to make probably $40 million. That That's a pretty good plan for him, even if he's going to take the loss, which... Look, I never want to say nobody has a, a chance. I've said that enough times in my life and been proven wrong. But what you're saying is, is that it, this will be the greatest upset. That's the only way you can say it. I would never say somebody has zero chance, uh, but I think it's very, very small. And I'll tell you right now, if it, do, if it did happen, the first thing people would say, oh, it's a fix. It's a fix. Uh, Andrew and Parsippany, you're next up on ESPN New York. Gordon Damer, how's it going, man? Andrew, what's going on, man? Hey, so I want to talk about the Knicks. Um, I may ramble. I apologize. I just, something that's driving me nuts. Love to get your reviews. So all you hear is how we want to get rid of Carmelo, get rid of Carmelo. I mean, I grew up a Knicks fan, and we're just not a good team now. He, it's kind of a weight we got to move on. So all they want to do is get rid of him. Now there's potential out there, but now you're hearing that they don't want to take back with the Anderson contract, but you want to get rid of him. But they show that they don't know what they're doing. They give a ridiculous contract to a uh, was it Glenn Rice Jr. whatever his name is, or Hardaway. Tim Hardaway. Hardaway. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's one of the former players they had. Son. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. They give a ridiculous contract to him. They don't want, it, but yet they don't go after the proper people. What are they looking to achieve? It, it doesn't make any sense. You know, instead of going out and saying. Let's give a bigger contract to maybe someone like Noel, bring in, start building a base with a center and a power forward, and you got a potential point guard, get the shooters. They don't do that. Well, now they're just looking to dump, well, whether dump Carmelo or not, it doesn't make sense. And then all we're going to hear through the whole winter is, oh, we have nobody on the team that can score. It'll be like the Tyson Chandler trade when they came in, got rid of Chandler, and then everyone complained that he, he brought in that dud of a center. Well, well, but I mean, look, to me, it can't, Andrew, it can't be about right now. Like, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, when they get rid of Melo, people are in for a rude awakening in terms of Christoph Porzingis. Porzingis is not ready to be the man yet. Now, look, he, you've seen the videos of him working out. He's got a lot of work to do uh, before he's ready to be the best player on a good team. Right now, his offensive you know game is know. threes and putback dunks. But I don't know if it can't be about be. right now. Well, uh, look, that's that's to be debated, right? That's to be figured out. That's to be developed over time. Um, you might be right. He might not be able to develop into that. We will see. But at least right now there's the potential for that. But once Melo's gone, um, there's going to be a lot to still be decided. Now, look, I am filling in for Stephen A. I realize I'm a little 
uh, itchy on the trigger finger. I believe it was Matt Middletown said he wanted to make a point about the Yankees. I got rid of him before. I, uh, very short. I have a very short attention span. I blame iPads and Steve Jobs. Uh, it's all their fault. It's not my fault. No blame goes this way. It's all uh, going that way. Uh, if you didn't get the uh, point, Matt, I'm sorry. But uh, you know, always hit me up on Twitter. I'm looking to push the Twitter followers up to at least a respectable level. At Gordon Damer on the old Twitter machine. All right, let's get back to the phones. Uh, Jay, Jay is in uh, Ridgefield. Jay, you're next up on ESPN New York. Ridgefield Park, sir. What's that? Oh, thank you, sir. It's Ridgefield Park. Oh, Ridgefield Park. Okay. I thought yeah. you were giving me a compliment. GD, I right. love you. I ah, love there we go. There's a compliment. Yes. Listen, you need somebody to call who knows something about combat sports. All right. I who do you know? Oh, it. you. Okay. Wait, yes. Go ahead. Yes, me. I've, I, was, I wrestled since I was a little kid. I boxed Muay Thai the whole night. All right. I want to preface this with saying, love Conor McGregor. Biggest, um, he's my best guy in UFC. And I love Floyd Mayweather, too. Besides Roy Jones, my second fe- best fighter. But Conor McGregor is not beating Floyd Mayweather. He's not <laughs> going to be competitive against Floyd Mayweather. Look at UFC fights, how wide his stance is, okay? And then I hear people say, oh, well, he's going to be the hardest puncher that Floyd Mayweather ever faced. Are you serious? Can well, I mean, that, that, Jay, that's assuming that he hits him. That's th- th- Thank you, Gordon. That's assuming <laughs> that he hits him. Because right. one guy's hit him in the last 20 years, and it was Shane Mosley. And if Shane Mosley couldn't rattle him, then Conor McGregor ain't rattling him. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Mayweather had another fight recently. I'm trying to think of who it was against, where I felt like he took a really good shot uh, and was able to take it. Um, you know, look, this is... You know, when you unfortunately for the UFC guys, they are taking it very personally when you say that you don't think that Conor McGregor has a snowball's chance in hell. It's 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 really little to do with him, and mostly to do with the format. It's a really bad format. You you have gone. It's like the guy who plays once checkers and you're playing chess. It, it's 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 a different thing. Now, if it was a three-fight series, all right, then maybe you would you would have a point. But it's boxing; it's not a combination. And you can come up with all the little well, you know, he well, you know, he boxes he, in his training. He boxes one day a week. That's awesome. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather in his training, he boxes every day, every you just single can't day. Push that stuff to the side. Y- you can. When you're talking about a boxing ma- match, Chris, you can. I mean, if you're if you're talking about somebody that's 40 years old that hasn't fought in two years against somebody that's 28 what, in the top of th- his prime, but, I mean, that plays but at the top of his prime in another sport. He's not at the top of his prime. He, he's not going to have a prime in boxing. He's going to box once, and then that's going to be it. You can't take that out. Of, like, you can't say, well, you know, he's he has some skills that are relatable. Now, if this was the argument of, okay, Floyd Mayweather uh, or, or Conor McGregor is giving up on UFC and he is going to train to be a professional boxer, can he do that? Then we could have a different argument. But that's not what we're, we're taking him and saying, okay, not only are you going to take up boxing, little twist, we're going to do it against the best guy. It's, it's silly. It's absolutely silly. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh... Honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um, well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call GEICO, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, sunshine. (laughs) GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. It's me, the little voice in your stomach. And as you can tell by my musical selection, I have impeccable taste. So I won't settle for anything but the most tasty snack 
all natural Alberto beef jerky. It's lean beef, slow cook, and seasoned to perfection. All natural and all delicious. So listen to the little voice in your stomach. Indulge my great taste and feed me some all natural Alberto beef jerky. Alberto beef jerky. You get out what you put in. Refers to Alberto's all natural line of beef jerky. Minimally processed, no artificial ingredients. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show. We've been talking about uh, Mayweather McGregor. And my uh, my thought that if you're betting on McGregor or if you're saying that McGregor is going to win this fight, that what you're saying is you believe in miracles and that this will be the greatest upset in the history of sports. Uh, one uh, little thing before we get back to the phones. Uh, Yankees have reportedly made a deal, not a major one. Uh, Yankees and Brewers, Yankees sending Tyler Webb to Milwaukee for first baseman outfield prospect Garrett Cooper. Yankees get Gary Cooper. That's amazing. Uh, no, Garrett Cooper, 26 year old. Oh, no, wait a second. Uh, Gary Co- Garrett Cooper, not Gary, dumb dumb. Uh, Garrett Cooper, 6'6, 230 pound righty, has yet to make his uh, major league debut. This is according to the Daily News. 75 games, AAA this year, 366 batting average, an OPS of uh, just over 1,000, 17 home runs, 82 ribbies. So who knows? I guess a little bit more. Uh, depth at first base. Yanks could use some. I guess it's a little bit of insurance uh, in case uh, Greg Bird uh, does not make a return uh, the rest of the year, but I uh, would not think the Yankees are done with, uh, what, a couple of weeks before the trade deadline. But uh, let's get back into the phones. 1 800 919 ESPN, 1 800 919 3776. In terms of my point, I kind of feel like Floyd Mayweather. I don't feel like anybody's laid a glove on me yet so far. But uh, let's see if. See, uh, see that's. That's an opinion, though. I I feel I I laid in the break a couple, couple touches on you. You just what, don't want to admit it. Okay, well, like what? I I think you're just misunderstanding the fact that Floyd is forty, yes. Connor's twenty nine. Connor has the reach on Floyd. Floyd hasn't had to fight somebody that has had more of a reach than him since De La Hoya 10 years ago. Okay. And he hasn't fought in two years. Connor's been training do, do for this for like he's, a year he's, and a he's, half. He's, he's fallen off. Like, he's 49-0, and right? Do you think that he would take this fight if he thought that there was any chance that he was going to lose? Like, he was going to blow that on uh, something of this type? Sometimes money can blind you. And this is a whole lot of money, and he can see that this is going to beat Pacquiao Mayweather and the amount of money he's going to make off of it. So sometimes money can blind you. But... Your, the reach is only good is if at the end of the reach, your fist hits the other guy. I mean, the best way I could put it is Adrian Peterson was the best running back wow, in fantasy a, football for a long time, and then people fall off. And yeah. you just never know that year when he's the number one pick, and right, then he just but, doesn't but, go but, anymore. Right, but he didn't fall off by going to play in the Canadian Football League. Like, he fell off in the NFL, the highest level of competition. If he went to the, the, to the, the CFL or the developmental league or whatever the heck they're calling it now, he would look like a man possessed, right? Because the level of competition wouldn't be as high. See, some would say MMA fighters are more skilled. It's almost not like at boxing, like, Chris. Not at boxing, they're not. Not at boxing. Right, but they exactly. Are That's my point. But they're not. They're not trained like a boxer. Dumb, dumb. Dumb, dumb. Come on, Chris. Get it. That's what I'm talking about. Delusional UFC fans. They have surp- the Nick fans are sitting back saying, "Wait a second. We have lost our title as the most delusional in the world." I'm waiting for a Nick fan to call up Until and tell me that, that that Ron Baker's underpaid now. Wait a second. We'll get that title back. Ron Baker deserves 15 million. All right. Let's go back to the phones. Show has gotten off track here. Let's try to get back on track. Uh the uh, the uh, the macchiato I had before the show is just flowing through my veins right now, I'm like all hyped up. Uh, let's go to Ernesto in Jersey. Ernesto, Double G, what it be? It's been a long time since I've spoken hey. to you. Hey, Ernesto, what's going on, my man? Good, good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I am an MMA guy, but let's be honest. It's like you said, it's he's fighting against the best defensive fighter in boxing. His record shows it. He wouldn't take this fight, and I'm going to have to go by what he's done in his past history. He's not going to take a fight that he's going to lose. All right, guys? So I don't know what all you people are thinking. He has not fought a fight in the past 10 years that he's not going to win. It's that simple. Now, McGregor 
he is a better punch in terms of power, but to land it, that's another story, man. He has to try to land a punch, and no one has, and his career has landed except for Mosley. You said it earlier. Mosley was the last person to even tap him. You know what? Pa- I think Pacquiao did get a couple of decent shots on him in that fight, yeah, he, but yeah, he, he took those, up. and it was fun. You know, it wasn't like he was wobbled at all. He ate it like it was lunch and kept on going, and he kept won the fight points. Exactly. All right, Ernesto. All right. Good point. Good point. You agree with me? Excellent point. Two points for Ernesto. Ernesto also wanted to say that the that the the press conferences, at least the the tag was the press conferences have been like the WWE on steroids, which is saying something because there's WWE on steroids. All right, uh, let's go out to uh, Alex in Tarrytown. Alex, hey, how's it going? What's going on, Alex? All right. Listen, I these UFC fans are truly <laughs> delusional, and I I I love the UFC. I like I, watching. I it. do it's too. Great. It's it's fun to watch. I get it. But it's not like yeah. I, I think that you they, they think that you're like insulting them, like it's a personal attack, like I, you're, we're not, you're devaluing we're not. UFC. UFC's great. If this were a UFC fight, my opinion would be on the exact opposite guy. It, it would be the exact opposite thing. The, the the point I wanted to make is if you think McGregor has if you think McGregor can beat Floyd Mayweather, even a year removed or a year and a half removed from his last fight, put it in context, put it in perspective then you're technically saying that McGregor would beat basically every 10, yeah. 147 to 154-pound fighter. If you're a boxing fan, there's Errol Spence, Canelo Alvarez, Alvarez Triple G, uh, Miguel Triple G, Miguel Cotto, uh, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman. Uh, you're, you're saying that McGregor beats all of these guys. Right. He wouldn't make it past the third or fourth round if they really wanted to rip his head off. Well, here's the other thing as well. It doesn't make sense. Here's the other thing. Like, remember, I don't remember the guy's actual name, but CM Punk, when he went from the WWE and he wanted to have a career as an, as an MMA guy. And there were people who thought, well, you know what? He, he might be able to put the guy got his head. Look at the pictures of his ear. You could make a horror movie based solely on CM Punk's ear from that bout. It was horrific. That's different. Now that is different. Why is that different? You have in one wrestling. Guy, I mean, right, they're all but, acrobatic, uh, but no, every no. I'm move sure there is... are there are grappling moves that you have to learn in wrestling. I'm sure that there are things you have to look that are transferable to other sports. But when and he tra- well, look, he's training in MMA. He'll be fine. No, he it, it, it's the. There's a first off. There's a learning curve if he were just going to get involved in the sport. If he, if if Conor McGregor wanted to become a boxer, there would be a who even knows at the age of 28, 29, if he'd able, be able to do even that. That's that's a lot to learn at that age. But you're now throwing into the equation that he's going up against the guy who's the best defensive fighter out there, and that. Like, you might say, well, you know, he, yes, but when you get to that level, even little differences make a big difference. There's a big difference between being able to throw a punch in one venue and being able to throw a punch at the highest level in boxing. There's a difference. There's a difference. There just is. Let's go out to, uh, let's see here, Allen in Brooklyn. You're next up on ESPN New York. Hey, Commissioner Gordon, how are you, buddy? Hey, Alan, what's going on? Uh, you know what? You know, I'm just trying to wrap my arms around this. You know, everybody's discounting McGregor. You know what? I was originally going to talk about the Knicks, but they're delusional. The Knicks are just <laughs> discombobulated. You know, right. from Phil Jackson, now he's out. They bring back uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., now Ron Baker. Yeah, we got the answer, Ron Baker. But whatever, that's, that's a story for another day. But in terms of Mayweather and, and McGregor, you know, everybody seems to, you know, to, to think that He's going to get his. He's going to get his behind. You know, McGregor. I, I understand what you're saying, but you know, I, I don't know if anybody understands. You know, McGregor is used to getting hit with elbows, with uh, with fists. With, you know, you know, uh, Mayweather. Yeah, he has the best defense, but forty percent of his defense is weaving and bobbing. You know, he, he doesn't let his he doesn't let his attacker get him. He doesn't let the, you know his opponent get a, get a punch in. You know, McGregor gets one punch in. It's going to be you know a, a Shane Mosley or a Pacquiao. It's going to be a punch. And, and, you know, who knows if Floyd, at 40 years old, can start taking those hits. But I, 
I, I, first off, Alan, you've hit on it. Like people who, who, who think that McGregor can win, they say, well, you know, it only takes one punch. Okay, if that's where you want to go, that you that, that's your hope, is that he can get in one punch. What are the odds that that one punch, that A, he gets it in, B, it does enough damage to knock Floyd out, if that's the, what you're putting on? And look, I'm not saying that Floyd um, is going to knock out uh, McGregor in three rounds. I could see the situation arising where it's, it could even be a decision, maybe. I could see that. I'm not saying that McGregor is going to be completely embarrassed and just vomit all over himself in the ring. He'll 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 do some stuff, but he's not going to touch Floyd if Floyd doesn't want to be touched. It's just silly. And and the, and the crazy thing to me is not just that people like are interested in it. That's fine. Uh, I don't. Floyd fights generally aren't. Uh, visually pleasing unless you're like a defensive boxing aficionado. You love a, uh, a good defensive performance. I don't know who does. I, I, I guess there's diehard boxing fans that love that kind of stuff, but they're generally not interesting fights. And like what you're saying about, okay, he can, he can get that one power punch in like Mosley did. Mosley's punches happened much quicker. I mean, the speed... To, to be able to say, I'm going to take up boxing, and uh, three months from now, I'm going to fight the best guy in the world. And think that that, well, that, 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 sure, that could happen. That could happen. In three months. He needs one of those Rocky montages right now. He's just doing, like, really weird exercises with, like, a sledgehammer. He's doing that thing where he, like, lifts up his... You know, it's funny. For all the people who were down on uh, ba- uh, on uh, baseball steroids, they never had problems when Rocky Balboa did them. You see the transformation Rocky Balboa made at the age of... Come on. He was in Russia. Come on. He was doing something under the table. 1-800-919-ESPN, 1-800-919-3776. Al says he's interested now. I'll, I'll take credit for that, Al. Go ahead. Hey, what's up, bro? How are you hey, doing? Uh, real quick, I just want to say I'm, I'm, a, I'm a much bigger uh, boxer fan than UFC. Um, and honestly, he doesn't stand a chance, man. The most, the, the most, the, the press conferences are amazing. That that's what keep, that's what's piqued my interest, to be honest with you. And uh, that being said, boxing is the one sport that age can show up in the middle of a round, and it's it's weird. The Roy Jones before he fought Tarver, you would never have imagined Tarver. Beat him, and age is that, and that's the one sport that age could just show up in the middle, and that's the one thing in my mind that could happen to Floyd. I don't see it happening, but don't don't discredit that. And also, uh, Floyd's having trouble with southpaws, and that's uh, McGregor the southpaw. Um, look up uh, uh, Mayweather, Chop Chop Corley. He Corley was stunning him left and right. Um, Zab Judah had moments, and uh, the other time you would look at the the fighter that you were looking for that hurt Floyd last. Uh, his name was Marcos Maidana. Uh, and, no, I, I wasn't really meaning f- hurt him so much as just delivered. I, I think it was Pacquiao that he ha- he had one round where he delivered like a couple of Pacquiao, really good shots. He, he had him in, he had him on the ropes, but hey, you come into a fight with a hurt shoulder and not tell anybody, right? And I'm, when he stood in Floyd, I'm like, why isn't he jumping on him? And, yeah. You know, Al, you, you, Al, so far today, you have brought up the best point. That is true. In boxing, more so than other sports, uh, age can show up. It's not expected. You just assume everything's going to go along fine. And age in the blink of an eye can all of a sudden, that that is true. I don't think that's going to happen here. Uh, but if, you, if you're looking for a path, right, if you're looking for a way that McGregor uh, could win, in my eyes, that one at least is based in reality. That without us knowing it, without him being in the ring for a couple of years, we haven't seen it. But I find it very hard to believe. Because you can say what you want about Floyd as much as you want. That dude's a smart dude in terms of what he does in the ring and the opponents he picks and the way he goes about his career. And there's no way, if he thought he was slipping, that he would take this fight on this biggest stage. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show. We've been talking about McGregor and Mayweather. Uh, we were going to get into a little bit of baseball uh, coming up second half of the season starting uh, on Friday. Yankees making a minor trade for uh, a Brewers first baseman, so the uh, trade deadline not too far away. 
And uh, one little note that I saw today that if I, I, I cannot believe that this would actually happen, but if it does, I might lose my mind. And that's to assume I've not already lost my mind. Uh, let's go out to uh, Trey in Woodridge. Trey, you're next up on ESPN New York. Hey, Gordon. Uh, first time, long time. I just had a quick uh, take on the uh, Mayweather-McGregor fight. Um, I think the over-under rounds is at nine and a half right now. And with uh, McGregor's transformation basically from MMA to boxing, I wanted to get your take on being that in boxing it's only strictly upper body and no lower body shots. Uh, can uh, McGregor transform that uh, kind of focused energy um, to withstand 12 rounds? And if he can last over nine and a half, thanks. Well, I mean, look, I, I, I'm of the belief that McGregor is not going to land a punch uh, against Mayweather. Unless Mayweather has just aged so much in these two years that he's been away, that his his skills have diminished so much. If the Mayweather we get in this fight is the Mayweather we've seen uh, over, what, the last five years, if that's the case, then McGregor doesn't, doesn't land a punch. Now, how much damage Mayweather can do, I, I think he'll be able to do quite a bit. I mean, I, I think people are, are underestimating what the task is here for Conor McGregor to be able to transform himself at the age of 29 in a short period of time to go to another sport, and it's another sport against the best in that sport. I could see a situation. I mean, if I had to make a prediction, I would say five rounds. Five rounds is how far this will go. And I don't believe uh, that... I do think that McGregor will be frustrated because I don't think that he'll be able to dictate like he would ordinarily do in, in, in UFC. Uh, but I don't think this whole idea, and they've kind of downplayed it, um, that his contract, if he does something uh, outlandish, he, he you know bites an ear, he uh, throws a kick, that he will not get his money. And make no mistake, <laughs> he might be a wild man. He's not so much of a wild man that he's going to throw away uh, $40 million. That's a wild man. That is a crazy man. Uh, let's go out to uh, Titus is in Brooklyn. Titus. Titus. Uh, and Titus is gone. You would think that when you heard Titus, like it's not that common of a name, you'd be, oh, that's me. It's not like we're confusing you with another Titus. Is, that, is he talking to me? Am I, am I Titus? Yes, you're Titus. Um, Frank in Westchester. Frank, you're next up on ESPN New York. Hey, what's up, pal? How you doing? What's going on, Frank? Frank has no idea. Um, so, quick point, uh, two points. Yes. One, uh, why it's a win-win situation for Mayweather. And two... The only way McGregor has a chance, obviously he doesn't have that much of a chance, but basically if you take a guy that's a defensive fighter and you make him come to you. So a lot of guys go after Mayweather. What McGregor has to do is he has to make Mayweather come to him and, and not force, you know, I don't think Mayweather's going to be able to knock him out because he's, he's not a knockout puncher. McGregor has been hit hard. And, again, I don't think he has a chance, but if I was May- McGregor, that's what I would do. And – it's a win-win situation, I think, for Mayweather because, honestly, he's making whatever amount of money he's going to make. And you know what? If he loses, which I don't think he will, he's going to make double that in the next fight, in the rematch. Well, so. <laughs> I, I, I would uh, – look, it's boxing. Uh, who knows what happens? Uh, there's always that possibility. Uh, I, I don't I, – I would – I find it hard to believe that – it's almost like the Seinfeld thing with the mom-and-pop shoe organ uh, – the shoe place – that Kramer, t- it all turns out to be a big scam. Mom and Pop uh, entered the, uh, the the area 50 years ago, built a business, and then made off with your shoes. Like, for this to be a scam, for, for there to be a fix in, you know, Floyd Mayweather would have to have built up his career to this point to all of a sudden throw a fight for a lot of money. And the re- I mean, he's going to make $100 million in this fight. Um, the amount of damage that Floyd can... can uh, put on McGregor, I think that will be interesting. Uh, as you said, he's not generally a knockout guy, but if this plays out the way I think it does, the way a lot of people think it will, McGregor's not going to be able to really do anything offensively. I know what you're saying. Oh, let him come to you. You know, Floyd's been <laughs> not his first rodeo. He's, he's, he's kind of dealt with this before. He knows what he's doing, is my point. 
Uh, Vinny uh, is in Queens. Vinny, you're next up on ESPN New York. Hey, thanks for taking the call. Hey, Vinny. I agree with you. I agree with you 100% that McGregor stands no shot in this fight at all. And honestly, I believe we've seen it before. Hear me out for a second. When Michael Jordan went to go play baseball, you, you figure he's a guy who's in the prime of his career doing the best that you can do in a sport. And, you know, a lot of the skills translate. He's got the speed, the athleticism, the work ethic. He goes into baseball, and he's struggling. And now he's playing against minor league talent. Think about it if you put Michael Jordan up against the Yankees or the Braves of the 90s. He would have stood no shot. People would have laughed. And actually, I'll take it one step further. I think it's disgraceful and disrespectful to the sport as a whole that McGregor thinks he can go in there, just waltz in on about a year of training, and think that he's better than the best boxer in the world. I think it's delusional. I think it's delusional. And I'm not a fan of USC – or boxing, per se. I'm a casual fan of both, and I think it's outrageous that he actually thinks he has a shot to win this fight. It's Agree like with Donald me? LeGreca Excellent thinking, point. Like, it's like Don LaGreca thinks that he has a shot to hit an outlier fastball. I mean, it would never happen. It would never happen. Well, Vinny, you were absolutely right. It did not happen. But look, I, I, from Don's point of view, you have to keep in mind, you, you know, I will defend my friend Don LaGreca by saying you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Now, in Don's case, he missed 100% of the shots he did take. I will say, no, in real defense of uh, the Don thing, you know, a lot of pitchers, I've talked to pitchers after their careers are over, uh, and they can't, like, I, I remember talking to Doc Gooden. I said, Doc, if you had to, you know, heat it up and throw right now, how fast could you throw? And he said, honestly, I couldn't throw it all. My arm is completely shot. So, Al, congratulations to Al. Al's still obviously in very good shape. Can still hum those wiffle balls up there. Um, in terms of the Michael Jordan thing, look, it, it's... It, it, what Michael Jordan did, you, if you take a step back at the age that he was at and he went to the minor leagues and he did it, I think he hit 202 um, and had a bunch of stolen bases. That accomplishment is amazing to be able to do that at that age. Now, does that mean that he is going to be able to go up against the best? No, of course not. That's what we're saying. Like, it, it's not to diminish Conor McGregor at all. By saying that he's not going to be able to land a punch on the greatest defensive fighter of all time, if he were to do, if he were to train for years, guys have trained for their whole lives in professional boxing and have not been able to do that. And you're right; it is a little bit of a, of an insult to think, ah, six months I'll bang this out, do a couple of things with a heavy bag, with that fast boop boop boop. I'll play Mike Tyson's punch out for a couple of days. I'll be good. I'll be good. Am I going to get a hit in the in the Sasso? Who knows? I've never played softball before in my life. So uh, I would, I mean, well, I put the bat on the ball. Yes. I mean, it's softball. How hard can it be? I'm a big believer that if you give me enough time and it's not too much of a, of a, like I've always said to my wife, if you gave me a little bit of time, I could qualify to go to Vegas on So You Think You Could Dance. You give me enough time. I can I can whip together one of those things. Like, if you give me a year, I can do that. But that's not me saying I'm going to be Mikhail Baryshnikov in a, in a dance-off. I don't know any of the famous dancers. Switch. What's the guy? Twitch. Is it Twitch? Switch? I don't know what his name is. I'm not going to be better than, you know, Michael Jackson in his prime. It's just silly. It's silly. And, and and for the person who brought up, like, well, it's, it's insulting that Conor McGregor even thinks this. Who knows if Conor McGregor even thinks that he actually could win? Like, I don't know that. Like, deep down in places that he doesn't talk about, like, does he... Even if he thought, I can't win, he's got to take the fight. He's going to make $40 million. What does he clear for a regular fight? $2 million? Chris, what does he clear for a regular fight normally? I'll have to take a look. Right. I'll I mean, take a it's, 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 let's, let's say ballpark. It's two million, million and a half, two million, three million. This is 40. He's not making anywhere close to that in anything else. So, of course, he has to take this fight. And even if he goes in there and gets bludgeoned, which I don't think will happen, but who knows? I mean, I think that's more possible than him winning. Um, He'd still have to take the fight. He's going to make $40 million. $15 million is, is what, what he made he, for a regular fight? Yeah, he fought Nate. When he fought Nate Diaz, he got he got $15 million okay. for that fight. All right, so say he makes, 
I think the number we've heard is between 40 and 50. He's going to make three times what he ordinarily would make. So, I mean, and, and you know, he's 28 now. Is he 28 now, 29 now? I mean, he. I would say he's, he's closer to the end than he is the beginning, right? So, you know, he's maximizing his potential. Good for him. He should do that. That doesn't mean I have to buy into the delusion. Speaking of delusions, speaking of minor league baseball, Bob Clappish has a note today that if this actually happens, it will be the most embarrassing thing that I think we've probably ever seen with one specific team. And they have a long list of embarrassing things that they've done. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show. One other thing that I wanted to bring up today before the show is out. Uh, Bob Clappish, uh, the record, writing his second half uh, look ahead to the baseball season. And I guess we can get more into this tomorrow. Um, he brings up the story to watch for the Yankees and for the Mets. And the story he brings up for the Mets is Tim Tebow. And this is what he writes. You better believe he's coming. The further the Mets fall out of contention, the sooner he'll be in flushing. Get ready for the circus. Now look, the Mets have done a lot of things that are embarrassing. Mercury Mets, remember those with the uniforms? All the things with Vince Coleman back in the day, Bobby Bonilla, Lots of things. If they actually call up Tim Tebow and put him in a major league baseball game, when, I'm sorry, I like Tebow as a guy. I admire him for trying to follow a dream and and make himself into a major league player. Good for him. He does not belong anywhere near a major league field. And if we've seen anything about baseball players, and you almost kind of have to admire it at their level, they're insane when it comes to what they consider to be insults. Like if a guy hits a home, like uh, the the home run that was hit off Strickland three years ago, he remembers it. I'm going to pay that guy. If they bring a guy who has no, he's not a major league baseball player. And please don't call up with the stats of, oh, he's had really a good two weeks at high A ball. Come on. If the Mets actually, for the sake of, what, 10,000 tickets, bring up Tim Tebow, what they're saying is that they're not a professional Major League Baseball team, that they're an entertainment, they're a sports entertainment company. And if that's what they're going to do, hey, let's go full bore. Let's bring in Kim Kardashian. She can play second. I mean, the Mets are not calling up their legitimate prospects while the season fritters away. Ahmed Rosario. No, 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 no. We're not going to call him up. He's a professional baseball player. Let's call up Tim Tebow so we can sell some shirts and sell some tickets. I mean, that would, and I don't believe, I I still, I, I, I cannot envision that that will actually happen. I want to hold out some hope. But if the Mets actually do that, that is as embarrass that is more embarrassing for their fan base than anything that they have ever done before. So we'll see as the season goes along if that, that I, I can't believe that they I mean, even after Sandy Alderson admitted that they only signed him as a publicity stunt, that's bad. To then put the publicity stunt into a major league game, oh my goodness. That's, I mean, that one will be hard to top. Maybe when they sign Air Bud to a lifetime contract. Oh no, a max, super max deal. Knicks and the, the Mets will be fighting over Air Bud. Oh my goodness. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh... Honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um... Well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. 
and see when they call Geico,、uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, Sunshine. <laughs> Geico, because saving 15 percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Ooh, all right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot of colors、mm -hmm. <laughs> and shades. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Here, why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving fifteen percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer.